I was just, you know, letting it warm up, getting that tweet out there. Tweet out, tweet out. We're good. Oh, it's Wednesday. This is not table talk day, but we're doing a table talking. We had some stuff, some behind the scenes stuff uh, with, with the ghosts of the past. We don't want to show you how the sausage is made. Everybody. Yeah, we, yeah. But uh, so, so we're putting that on hold for this week. Tomorrow's Halloween, so we weren't going to table talk anyway. <laughs> so we, we backfilled with this. So we're here. We're going to talk about uh, Curse of Sapphire Lake. Bob, if you want to throw up that oh, yeah. sweet, sweet um, cover art. Uh, we're going to talk about the Curse of Sapphire Lake one shot that was run on our channel Monday uh, that I, I got to DM with a bunch of great players. Um, and we'll kind of get into that as we go. But before we dive in too deep... <clears throat> Let's talk about housekeeping. We are Featherfall Tabletop. Um, thank you for being here. Um, check us out everywhere on the internet. Featherfall Tabletop, uh, Twitter, Discord down below. Um, I'll, I'll plug. I'll plug Discord here once we get into the one shots. But we are. We have two sponsors. Um, one is Skull Splitter Dice. You can go to SkullSplitter.com. Use code Featherfall in checkout. Save ten percent. Their die. I'm. I'm struggling to find a better dice company, and I don't just say that because they're a sponsor, but they, they are really, really good. I they feel nice. I will say I have a bunch of, like, the resin dice. Yeah. I dislike them now. And, yeah, they're and no good. So, I mean, these here sit by my computer desk. They come in this little handy-dandy, and I'm not trying to be like, hey, y'all need to go buy um, Skull Splitter dice. It helps us. It helps the channel. But, like, for real, these are... Metal, thick, heavy dice. Is Adam put it? He was getting swole or something. Yeah. No. What did he? <laughs> he said some stupid thing. It was. It was Super kind awesome. of. It was kind of silly, but yeah. it was funny because it was like his arm was getting so jacked from throwing these dice. They're really that heavy. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And they're just quality made, and they help us out, which, you know, we love them for that, and you should love them too. And they're always constantly putting out new, new uh, styles, fashions, uh, new new color combinations. They had a Kickstarter that was rather successful that I got some dice from that with a sweet Skull Splitter logo on there. So uh, check them out. Uh, use code Featherfall at checkout for ten percent off. Um, we are also sponsored by Found Familiar Coffee. Um, they are so awesome in so many ways. Let me tell you why. One, they are a bit leader, so they're giving back to us. Um, constantly, and we really appreciate them for that. Two, they played in the one shot with us, both Aaron and Lindsay, um, the the founders of Found Familiar, played in this one shot on Monday. So that again, they're engaging with the community. And then three, they just have really really good coffee. Uh, we I think we're all kind of slowly getting some in. Kylie was working with the Step of the Wind, I think. Uh, I just finished up a, a round of Meta Magic and Detect Magic which reminds me I need to order some more. Uh, it's just quality coffee by awesome D&D themed. Um, so to get there, you go to foundfamiliarcoffee.com? Nope. Nope. You nope. fucked that up. Yeah, just tell we'll, me. We'll turn it back. It's just foundfamiliar.com <laughs> for, forward slash Featherfall. Yes, and that is our affiliate link. You can use code Featherfall at checkout. Get yourself a discount. They get obviously your patronage and we get a little kickback and uh that's so so nice um and you know they're doing great things in the community and we appreciate them for that so housekeeping done out of the way unless we want to plug our other shows on the channel <laughs> we have we have three to four nights of streaming any given week it depends on when you're coming with us mondays every other week we have community one shots where Somebody from the Featherfall team is DMing um, people from the TTRPG community in a one-shot. Tuesdays, every week, we have uh, The Gods We Know, a homebrew campaign of uh, Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And then Wednesdays, most Wednesdays, not tonight, but most Wednesdays, we have Ghosts of the Past, DMed by Bob, who is taking us through uh, his homebrew um, as a continuation of Waterdeep Dragon Fart. Um, it was the worst. Dragon heist dragon shyst uh, but yeah so that's where we are those are our own oh, table talk on thursdays so it's wednesday and it's we're fine. here yeah so. there's so many there's a combination that you just have to know uh but anyways all of this gets uploaded to our youtube channel I'll give that a plug um i'd love to see that thing hit 100 subs we're we're, we're at close. 89 yeah, we're, we're at close. 89 
Um, I'd love to see that hop up to 100 subs. And our podcast, uh, thank you all on the podcast side of things for sticking around and listening and um, uh, downloading and listening. I so guess. there's a few I things I want to say. Yeah. We just, give, we, I, I will give you the floor. We blew past 500 followers. So we set, I know I tweeted it out, but we're at 538 on Twitch, which is pretty awesome. But we're 13 views. We'll probably hit it tonight away from 7,500 views overall on Twitch as a channel, which is pretty awesome as well. I mean, yeah. that's that's a, that's no small small feat. Yeah. So I want to say thank you to everybody yeah. for just hanging out with us as we share our nerdiness um, with you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you to – I mean – Thanks to everybody watching and listening, and you know, thanks to all the people working tirelessly behind the curtains here at Featherfall. Uh, they don't get a lot of praise sometimes, and I just appreciate them for helping keep the engine churning. All right, housekeeping done. Let's talk about this this one shot. Uh, this is kind of we've done some module reviews. We've done Tomb of Annihilation, and we've talked about Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Um, I think this is our first real, like, kind of smaller review, so it, it'll be interesting to see how this goes. But just a little uh, background on this module is it was part of the early backer uh, goal or promotion for Skull Splitter Dice's Kickstarter that they had earlier <laughs> that year. Um, you, if you were an early backer, you got access to three different modules and this is the first one that uh, came out they were having some issues getting them out there but they are coming out and we appreciate that so this was the first one which you can't so, find this on drive through rpg right now is it nice. yes it is 395 it, on drive through oh, rpg i will say it's probably worth 395 like it, it you could we ran it in one night and i you could extend it to a two to three night thing, depending on how much you want your players to go. But I think that's a, a fair price for this. Um, but so it comes from uh, TPK Games, um, and it's written by Neil Litherland and Brian Berg, um, and it's for levels uh, one to two. I ran my players in there as a level one, and it's called The Curse of Sapphire Lake: A Tale of Misery and Woe. Um, if you want to see, like, the... I'm not going to read through some of the narratives on here on the opening, but if you want to see that, it is on the, the one-shot uh, VOD. But I I guess I'll give my overall opinion. And, Bob, I think you watched the whole thing. You can you can say, you know, kind of fill in on how it translated as a viewer. Yeah, absolutely. But my overall opinion of this is I, thought, I think it's very well written. They, they don't inundate it with a bunch of ability checks... Um, they kind of leave it up to you as as the DM to kind of fill in. They they do give you enough guidelines so that if you are a newer DM, you you have something to go off of. But I found myself uh, just going into that DM side of me and just letting it flow and doing what's natural. So some of the checks didn't translate from the text to the game, which is totally fine. You play, you know, you want to be able to play your game. So I I think they gave you enough. So there's enough there. There's a, a lot of lore written into this game that you could definitely go like down the rabbit hole and add a whole lot more. And this whole idea of uh, pushing trolls out of the forest and uh, old giant tombs and like there's a lot of stuff that you could just kind of attach and create a campaign with. Uh, I really enjoyed that. It, it's kind of the shame that some of that had to be left on the cutting room floor just because you know we're trying to run a one shot and stick to two and a half hours. So you gotta, you gotta kind of navigate through. Um, so as far as material, I think it's, there's a lot there and a lot for you to add on if you wanna use this as kind of a primer for uh, a homebrew campaign or something like that. Um, the setting itself is, is pretty cool. A little town that used to, was trying to be something and bad things happened and it died, turned into like a ghost town and now there's this resurgence. Um, the, the characters, the, the NPCs that are, are offered are all pretty kind of colorful and, and add to the story. There's no just random NPCs that don't have a goal. And I think that's nice for a one-shot is everything is really there to keep the story going. Uh, there's not just a bunch of filler stuff. Right. And I, I appreciate that. 
Um, enough stat blocks in there to kind of keep you going, get you going. Only one stat block wa wasn't provided, and that comes. Um, there's some giant toads that the characters had to fight, um, and you'd have to have the monsters manual for that. But other than that, everything is here um, that you need, and it's it's all contained in a one one thing. I mean, it's it's a beginning to an end story, so you do get the whole arc, and which is kind of nice. So. I, I, I liked running it. I felt it was easier to prep. I've in the past I've had um, some RPG crate one shots come in and I felt this was the most straightforward and clear one shot for me to read through and understand all the story beats beginning, middle and end. There's some in the past that I've read through and I kind a lot of things were missed. Um, so I, I really appreciate just the clarity in, in the writing here that kind of kept me as a DM. I mean, maybe it's just me as a particular DM, but it kept me moving forward and knowing where the story is going. So I, I, I really appreciated that. Um, Bob, what, what did what did you think uh, seeing this play out? Did So I'll not, leave, not really that. knowing that we were going to do this um, review. I mean, it's something we've talked about. But not taking notes during it, there were there were things that I picked up that I was like, I need to remember to talk to Chris about this because I thought it was great. So and again, I so I would be from the side of a player. I, I watched it the whole night on the stream. I didn't get to play, unfortunately. Um, but from the the side of the player, I will say there was a lot of like that block text that you read that I thought was very well done. I mean, it, it was I, I don't want to say eloquent. But it was good enough that it looked like an official, or sounded like an official Wizards of the Coast module. Yeah. And and then Chris, you know, so so just watching the whole thing, the, the music that you picked for it gave that perfect spooky vibe. Spoopy, um, I think is the spooky. term all the kids are saying now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, vibe to it. And man, it felt like a creepy, it felt like a creepy module and it felt like it was well written <clears throat> yeah text and, and flavor text before on on the show and i think a <laughs> spoopy thing <laughs> in the chat um i think i i enjoyed this box text uh oh what happened on stream we got old podcast coming up there it goes um i enjoyed reading this box text sometimes i just kind of breeze over it and don't read the whole thing but there's a there's a pretty lengthy introduction to this that I actually read out because it did sound um, it did sound nice and it and it made sense and it added enough flavor that we needed it needed to be said. Um, all the box text was necessary here, so I didn't really have a, a an issue in reading it and taking the time and devoting um, that that kind of lore dump <laughs> narrative dump into the uh into the game um as a player good i appreciate box text you know it's almost like getting a handout <laughs> you know ooh, a handout you know yeah i feel the same way with ooh box text um it's really nice one thing i one thing i would also say is that the images it came with were perfect too so it, it did look like it was like an in incarnate uh world map or of the area mm -hmm. um and i'll i'll try and work on bringing up the other image of the actual big bad guy um but i i thought again very very professional very very well done and it it makes me excited to you know look more into these guys yeah yeah so and because i had the digital copy i was able to to have some of the the handouts turn them into handouts and have them on screen and um and display them to the players and display them on the stream. Uh, the map, it's nice to have. It's There's only one map. It's a top-down map um, looking of the, the town of Kingsbridge and the Sapphire Lake. It's nice to give players just kind of that perspective um, so that they can kind of jump right in. Uh, the monster that's on screen right now, uh, this was, I mean, spoilers, obviously. This is a module review. So um, that's the Grundhelm. That is the, the terror in the night that is stalking this town of Kingsbridge. I, I like that picture. I like this idea of this huge giant skull now as a helmet with these giant runes uh, carved in the teeth. That's that's a great 
flavor picture to give to the players, and I'm glad it was provided. Um, some of the other pictures was the main NPC, the the kind of the the Lord Mayor of the town, the Jarl um, uh, Siegfried was given. Um, and if you've seen the show Vikings, it, it draws heavily from that kind of shaved sides and, and nice mane of hair with a <laughs> I, beard. I was going to say um, with like Jarl and everything, yeah, it, it really reminds me of Skyrim. Oh, um, of course, yeah, big time. Which, I mean, Jarl's not, like, proprietary to S Skyrim, right. but... But where else have you heard that in the last, you know, 10 yeah. years? Um, so here so is, here's the Jarl. Pretty good. I mean, again, these are these are well-done images. Yeah, and, and it's an, enough to give you some something to grab onto as a player. Seeing him and this picture of him, I'm better able to uh, get into the mindset of this character and better able to role play that character knowing kind of that scowl on his face and the fire in his <laughs> eyes and you know yeah. it's it's nice to have that and there was just enough provided they i didn't feel uh scrimped on the uh the pictures which is nice which is which again pictures flavor text i think it's all an a plus for me in the fact mm -hmm. that it, it really helps immerse the player in the game yeah and especially something one shoddy where we're trying to get in and out, you know, uh, we're trying to hit the those for our purposes, trying to hit the times and staying it to two and a half hours. This does some help. It helps kind of get it going. And I don't have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. I let some of the uh, the pictures do the so talking. I'll also say and I, I said this to them as well. I mean, you didn't have to do the heavy hitting because you had some amazing players as a whole. Oh. So, again, this group is a group of people who, well, again, besides fake brother, sister, husband, wife. <laughs> Sorry, inside joke. Uh, you know, the found familiar pair. So, again, Aaron and Lindsay, they know each other. But outside of that, nobody else knows each other. Um, it, 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 was, it was like some of the best role play from a, a group of strangers that I've seen just instantly pick it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which and, Lindsay's in our chat right now, and she's. <laughs> I'd I'd like to take credit for that, but no, it's they they grabbed on to the things that I was throwing out, and they they Im Im immersed themselves in the story, and part of that part of that's me, part of that's the player, part of that's the story itself, right? Is I'm able to give them enough flavor text for them to grab on to things and take the story hooks and and make decisions as their characters would, um, and like I said previous modules that I've kind of one shots that I've read through don't always have that so right. this was it was it was an A plus on that side of things um, I would like to ask DM DM prep as a whole yeah so how much did you have to do if I were to say let's pick this up for tomorrow night's game a, a spooky Halloween game because this is what they kind of marketed it as as well yeah yeah um, how much did you have to do and then how much was done for you all right, so I read through it twice, the module twice, and it is, it is fourteen pages. Um, let's see, it is thirteen pages. I read through it twice. First time I read through, um, I do color coding, like as a DM. If it's just flavor text or valuable information, I'll do it in one color. If it's a if it's a DC check, I do it in a different color. If it's a character name, I do it in a, a separate color. So. I'm able to, so the first reading, I just do that. I kind of go through and I highlight quickly. Um, and then I go back and read and now start to kind of piece together each individual character, each check that might have to be made and why they're making it and how I might narrate that. So that's the second reading. So I read through it twice, about, you know, 30 minutes each reading. So there's an hour. And then um, I probably just thumbed through it a couple times, just hitting some of those main characters and trying to, you know, create them in my mind. So about two hours, I had this thing prepped out pretty well. And, and I would say that's probably more than most because I, I, maybe, maybe and for me, at I, least I'm not going to read through it twice. <laughs> that's just me. Well, there's, there's this idea, like the first thing I said in the private chat was like, I'm nervous. Right. So there's this, um, this performance anxiety that kind of is washing over and I want that to be as lessened as much as possible. So I will read through it twice. I will make sure I have the stream overlays. I have all the pictures grabbed, you know, so that takes time and 
I, I just want to be prepared, right? Because we are creating a product on our channel to put out there, right? And, I, and I'm also taking three hours in the evening for these players to come sit down. I want to make sure that I have that. And that's that's the way I approach a module. If it's a, if it's a homebrew thing, like where I made it up, I don't put that much time into it because I know it, right? You, you have it up in there. You don't need to have it kind of all threaded right. together so tightly um, because you're kind of creating the story. But so yeah, about two hours plus prep through this. You could definitely read through it once and kind of uh, push away some of the, the deep lore that I brought up earlier, the giant stuff, the troll stuff. Um, some of that didn't didn't fully make it into the into the game itself, but it, it was definitely in the background. Um, so there's that. I I will say there are some things that I cut out that I didn't get to. Um, being a they were level one and they were talking and joking about having nine hit points and I'm I'm like oh shit I looked at the the main bad guys like attack and damage I'm like man he could one shot these guys so I took out an encounter I took out some traps um, one we were kind of pushed up for time but two I felt like. For level one that's that's yeah. kind of a lot yeah there were some there were some giant toads which have like 30 some hit points and they can swallow you it's i felt like it, it was a little little heavy now if we had if we had all five players maybe i would have kept it in there and maybe all level two that may make yeah, more sense level two i did tell myself i was going to nerf the toads like half their hit points um and maybe downgrade their damage just because I didn't want to TPK them on like the mini boss heading into the main boss. But that's right? their that's the name of the, the company. That, did, <laughs> that is right? the name of their their game company, TPK Games. So maybe maybe that's a theme with them is they are going to push the limits there with. But I I dialed it back a little bit for a couple reasons. One was time, and two was you know I didn't want them not to make it to the end. Right. I, I, yeah, that's I, fair. I wanted it to go there, um, but I, I did say I was going to dial back the uh, the <laughs> the uh, the toads. Uh, Lindsay in chat said she ended with two hit points, and that was one slice of the sword from the main bad guy. Uh, almost downed her pretty easily. So, and that was the only hit my person had. I will say, Lindsay, though, your level one rogue did twenty four points of damage opening round. And just kind of with sneak attack and the crit, it was, it was pretty intense. So, you know, you deserved it. That's it. <laughs> um, I, it's not all roses with this. I, I think it's there are some critiques from me that are maybe on the the negative side. I, I don't always feel good about you know, the negatives, but. I think the ending was kind of cliched, and and I I almost was laughing as I was reading it to the players. Um, so the monster is this abandoned child that was rescued from this troll, and now the troll is its mother, and then it's kind of protecting its mother. This monster is right, and uh, it, was, it was it's kind of this cliched thing that they're fighting this monster, but then he calls out for his mother. The mother comes in and says, "No, don't touch my son." it's kind of been done before so i would have liked a little different spin on that like we made they traversed down into the water through the tunnels into this uh ancient giant tomb and then now the mother's there to save the day so that was kind of a cliched overdone maybe uh, i would have liked a little different spin um how, how did that kind of portray itself in in the game so the, the ending. It, it, it just clicked for me as we're talking about it. And then I read some of the reviews. And I'm like, that's where I've heard this before. So this... <laughs> I, I don't know why I didn't pick this up before. This is like a very, very close spin on Be Beowulf, right? Yeah. Um, where Grendel comes and attacks him, right? Yeah. Where, where you know... I, I don't want to spoil the endings. Um, <laughs> but I, I agree and, and it was like okay so here's this trope of you know like almost Jason kind of right. yes, you know thing much. and you're just like 
okay. I, I guess it's a way to end it. Like, yeah. But I will say this: for a self-contained <clears throat> module that you are trying to beginning, middle, and an end, you need some of those tropes and those stereotypes to for, for players to get it, and they they could figure out their motivation because the the player's motivation totally changed once the mother came in and cradled this uh, this monster, this abomination. Right there, they knew it. They it didn't take it didn't take much to change their motivation and, and move them in a different direction. So I get it. And, and it's been done. I mean, you brought up Beowulf, you bring up uh, Jason uh, Friday the 13th. Like those are, are pop culture references that are very deep. And I, I get that. Um, I'm just, I'm ready for like newness. I want, I want something a little different, you know? Well, and so part, part of that too, um, it also tests your players because did the mom have a stat block? Yeah. No, the mom did not have a stat so block. So she's probably a civilian, which is But I I pulled out a troll stat block. She she was very old and had a crippled leg, so I, I kinda statted her a down. A troll stat block for the mom? Yeah. Was well she, she is a, a troll. Okay. She has regenerator regener re, regenerative. Yeah powers you know like trolls do okay. so does so did the grundhelm um it was able to regenerate once a day um so i grabbed a stole troll stat block kind of numbed it down because you know level one <clears throat> and and i didn't want to like create something and but it, it was not provided so, so uh, just in case they were gonna yeah. take that to the limit I, I wanted to have something there, but it gives your players the choice at the end, which is which is nice. Yeah, and it kind of kind of gives that block before that choice to say stop. And I'm sure yeah. the players could change it and, as the battle progresses. But level one, there's going to be a, a decent stopping point for this interruption, and it gives the players a choice. It really tests their you know alignment, if you will. Um, yeah. So I, yeah. So. The the ending, the last page in the module is returning to town with, you know, what they were supposed to bring was the head of this monster. Well, in the module, it gives you three different scenarios. Like, if the if they choose to fight the monster to the death, read this stat block. If they choose to listen to the mother and, and go in peacefully back to the town, read this. If they choose to lie to Siegfried, read this. So there there's three different <laughs> options, and I really enjoyed that being able to kind of know so now i have three avenues they they're gonna choose one of these there's not really any other way you could go they could travel into the sunset with the troll i guess that's one thing <laughs> they could have done um so it was nice to have a narrative stat block for no matter what they might choose yeah well i will say that i um, agree and my my party chose to to let the mother and the son live as long as they left and they came back with the helmet, the skull helmet, and as payment, um, Siegfried wasn't totally happy, but he he will take peace in his town as a win. Sure. Um, so that's that's how it turned out for us. Um, <laughs> I again, you said it was three three dollars and fifty cents on drive through RPG. I I can't help but think that's that's a great deal for the things that we've talked about. One, you get the self contained module. You get some of the handouts. You get a story that is easily comprehended and grasped by your players. <laughs> Kill safe. Um, so for that, I think I think it's a good a good deal. I'm not I'm not worried about you know promoting this and, and feeling like we're rip any they would be ripped off or they're getting something subpar. And like we said, some of the flavor texts were were pretty good. And and I appreciated them. So, I I'll also say that it it is for three dollars and ninety five cents. It is a, a fun side quest because you could you could make it out oh, to be for sure. You could make it out to be from what I've heard, listening and knowing as a DM, like you can expand this stuff. You can make this five hours. You can make it ten hours pretty easily. Yeah. Oh, easily. Um. They give you enough lore to do it, and to to make this a fun side quest for four dollars, do it. 
Yeah. Um, Shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Sorry. <laughs> it probably wasn't important. Probably not. Uh, <laughs> probably not. Um, doggone it. Yeah, I, I forgot. Oh, moving on. Got it. <laughs> I thought about it. Figured it out. So, you could you could m turn this into a bigger thing, and you could even up the ante, get make them level five players, put an actual troll in there, make the monster a little bit stronger. So you could give them more. You could add a couple more encounters because they do enter the lake, and there's really nothing there um, stopping them in the lake once they enter. It's only once they get into the tunnel that they encounter the toads. Um, so you could add some some stuff in there, like make the make the lake a little more spooky. Maybe some layer actions. You, you know, said it you wrong. Spoopy. Sorry. Soft K. Spoop E. Uh, you know. So there's a lot you could do, and I I like the idea of making it a side quest or you know something that is out there that you can use as the primer for your uh, a starting point for a homebrew thing. Um, I thought the the setting of Kingsbridge was nice, and there's a lot of lore and a lot of like NPC side quests that you could add in. Even you know, like for an example, there was the one one guy who's loading up his cart and he's pissed about all the logs in the road. You know, you could help him out. You could help cure the the crazy girl that's sitting on the the banks of the the lake, just <laughs> singing, singing out loud. Yeah. You know, um, I so will say that. that you did very well with that. That was very well done. <laughs> I, I was psyching my... Because there, there's an NPC that um, witnessed the first attack and she has kind of lost her mind and is just singing. And I told myself, I'm actually going to sing it on stream. And I, I did the best I could. It was great. Um, I, I cried. You know, I, I, I shed um, a tear. But yeah, so the, but that that's kind of cool stuff. I like... It's not just PCs talking. It's like, okay, this, this woman is singing. And she's kind of lost her mind, you know. So it's it's outside of the box PCs that are, you know, or NPCs, excuse right. me, that uh, you know, they're just not like here's an angry dude, you know. No, here's like a woman that has lost her mind and is singing constantly. Uh, and it and it was a way to dump information, give the players information in a different way because she's singing a, a poem about the monster, you know. So they get a little bit there. Um, but that's that's it, you know. I. I, overall, I think this is a great one shot. It was perfect. I was so glad it when I got it that it was as short as it was, uh, being 13 pages, and because I really wanted to run it uh, in our community one shots, and I didn't want to have to cut a whole lot out. So right. I was glad that it was um, the length it was. Again, the highlights I think are the flavor text and the the clarity of the writing. Um, it made it easy for me to understand and implement fairly well. I will also say um, that perfect for Halloween. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it, it was creepy enough. Yeah. And if you got some coming up, do it. Play it. Yeah. Play it tonight yeah. or tomorrow. Without without it being like Halloween in your face, it had enough creepy elements and yeah. and themes that. Again, we, we talked about Friday the 13th. You know, enough things there that you, pop culture-wise, can kind of plug it into and, and make it make it work. So, so if you were to give this a rating out of 10, it's hard to do. What would you do? Where would you be at? And would you recommend it? I think we already answered yeah. the second part. Definitely recommending it. I, th I think it's for all the reasons we said. Uh, out of 10, uh, let's... I'm gonna go seven point five. Five 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 nine. Out of wow. 10. Wow. <laughs> no, seven seven and a half ish. You know, like because the ending was a little um Tropey. Yeah, tropey. You know, I'd like to maybe a little spin on it. Um but the the tangibles were there, right? The the story, the flavor text, the uh, I'll do that some more. Don't, stop. Uh, <laughs> the the pictures, the handouts, those things are there to enhance the gameplay. Uh, I'm putting it up there, and you know, to be totally honest, we ran one a while ago called Bard's Gate. Um, I that one was below. I didn't think it was quite I didn't like as. That one. Yeah, the writing wasn't as clear. The story itself wasn't as clear. 
it was harder to decode as as a DM reading the text. So for that, it it's up there like this one because it was so clear. Yeah. And I just really appreciated appreciated it. So so yeah, I'd go like seven seven and a half to eight somewhere up there. I think there was attention paid to it, and and I could feel it, and and I appreciate that. And I mean, look at that cover, Curse of the Sapphire Lake. That was enough to give our art guy uh, enough inspiration to make a stream overlay. So that's nice. Again, I appreciate good art. Your yeah. art was the best of all the art. Uh, the office. You don't so, have to say that what you're quoting. <laughs> <laughs> no, sometimes you do. People don't always get it. Um, but anyway... That that's kind of our our module review uh, as we kind of like bowl in a china shop go through a module review. Um, again, I'm I'm glad I ran it. I'm glad I I had the players. I did. <laughs> um, and Lindsay, I agree. The Office is top top well, ten shows of all time. Yes, top it, three for me. I mean, I don't want to go down a rabbit hole here, but it's kind of losing some of its luster. And living on in just quotes. But. I, I think it loses its luster in the evolution of society. Yeah. And because some of it's like real cringy that you're like, yeah. what? Yeah. And I think that's I think. where Parks and Rec surpasses it yeah. in my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Adam, Adam, it is Wednesday. Where, where have you been? It is Wednesday. Welcome <laughs> no, we to Wednesday. We should have told him it's Thursday. <laughs> And then he stays to, home on Friday. To, today's Thursday. <laughs> That's another office. Uh, yeah. Dwight thinks it's Thursday. Um, <laughs> But anyway, that's our that's our module review for the Curse of Sapphire Lake. Again, that was a a gift for the early backers on the School Splitter Kickstarter, um, T by TPK Games. It is we posted the link in uh, the Drive Through RPG for the Drive Through RPG copy of this. Uh, if you if you'd like to pick it up, um, I will also say go for it. As you can see at the very top left, it says it's part of the Critical Hits, so they have another Critical yeah. Hit out there called False Valor. It's a five E. It's two ninety nine and it's from two thousand eighteen. But let me read this, and I think we should do this for our next one shot. All right. False Valor is the first in a series of short murder mystery adventures for first level characters. Peace has settled over Stone Crossing for generations now, and the farmsteads have prospered. When a young woman is found murdered, executed in a way that echoes the atrocities committed by the Green Glove Elves in the Three Dales War, sparks sparks begin to stir in the ashes. Anger and suspicion are growing, and through the reeve is, is trying to keep the peace. It's possible that the old war will resume if answers aren't found, and found soon. Nice. I, I like murder mysteries, to be honest. I think it would it would be a yeah. fun one shot that but it could go So it, it would be hard to do in the fact that if they don't give you hints to to poke in, if the players aren't getting it, do this, yeah. it could go on forever. Yeah. Yeah, that was that that was one thing I was a little more cognizant cognizant of. Uh, being a DM here in the one shot where, again, we talk about these this timeline we're trying to hit was where I was trying to give them enough lore and then let them explore versus me kind of pushing them. And we actually had a chat in our private chat <laughs> where they were asking, do we want to continue? Would you want us to continue or do you want us to go take a long rest? You know, so they asked that. They just, you know, good players being aware of all the surroundings, um, and I appreciated that. So it's a lot of lot of moving parts. So a murder mystery could go a lot of ways. You know, that thing could drag on, and you know, as you're trying to plant these clues. And the the hard part is, some of the most overt clues that you give go <laughs> unnoticed because, the, yeah. dude, I will tell you, the Tomb of Annihilation and it may be party specific was hard because like you well, you don't you don't know yeah. all, all the the like intricacies of it yeah and so you don't know to look like i don't and, know and to be fair we we are not a good puzzle group like our our role playing group is not so it it's 
Yeah, Tomb was tough. But anyway, that one sounds fun. So maybe that that'll be down the pipe here pretty soon in the uh, the one shot games. Um, but I think we're ready to kind of wrap this up. Yeah. Yeah, I think Unless so. Unless you guys want to debate Park and Rec versus The Office. Uh, anytime. Come at me, bros. <laughs> but anyways, I think we should wrap this up. Uh, thank you, uh, Lindsay and everybody else in the chat. I'm only going to use Lindsay's name, not Adam's name. You just use we'll Adam's name. <laughs> uh, but thank you for hanging out and entertaining us with your comments. Um, thank you for playing in the game. Uh, I really appreciate it. It's, it's nice to dm every now and then uh it's it's kind of a an eye opener you know you take for granted that you just play and you you forget how hard it is to dm sometimes so it, it's nice to kind of sit in that spot but it was made ever so easy by the quality of players i had uh in that game uh <laughs> what was that that was my that was my dog uh yawning farting <laughs> <laughs> um, leave this in uh, <laughs> uh, yeah I will leave that in not cutting that out um, we have a one shot coming up on the 9th of November that is from Jen who plays in uh, the gods we know she is DMing a golden girls themed uh, one shot that I heard they're making custom music what, what is this Theme songs? songs, theme song, theme song. Jeez, woo! Custom theme song in the tune of Golden Girls for uh, the D and D side of things. So that is going to be amazing. Uh, we have Kylie is DMing one on the Saturday, which would be a weird Saturday game. Yeah, let's see that happen. Which is called on the Find Familiar. Fine, fine. I thought it was just fine. I don't know. I don't know. It, I have to go back. But anyway, <laughs> she's DMing a game on Saturday the twenty third about. <laughs> Um, what DM, what what familiars are doing in their off time? Uh, so that sounds like a bunch of uh, hoopla going on there. That'll be fun to watch. And then December 9th. Yeah, we're already into December with these things. December 9th, our very own Cole, who plays in the Gods We Know, will be DMing uh, one shot with more information to come. And that one is still empty. So we will have a link for that one in our Discord. If you want to be in that game, you hit that link to our discord you join uh you hit exclamation point i want in or simply tell us you're here for the one shots and we will put you in that channel get you hooked up and you can share the table with any number of us i'd also like to say chris and i will be live oh, live in oregon doing <sighs> a live game together so if you don't know we're real brothers in real life irl and I'm in Minnesota, he's in Oregon, so we will be in Oregon playing a live game together yeah. over the holidays. It is, we don't know what we're doing yet, but we have yeah. less than two months to figure it out. I, I have some <laughs> ideas floating around. Um, logistics are going to be the biggest thing, trying to, because, you know, I'm here in my little cave streaming and trying to make it into a bigger thing around a table. Logistically will be interesting, but... I'm excited. It might question it be mark? any number of things at this point. What's that? I'm excited? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it'll be it'll be interesting because it, it's not anything we've ever done before. I will say, um, in the five years I've played D and D, I have never played in a live game. Oh, uh, you're you're missing out. I know. I am. I I love playing with everybody here on this channel, but. There's something about a home game where everybody gets there early. You got your snacks laid out. You got your dice trays. You got your character sheets. And you're all looking at each other in the eyes. Uh, and the DM screen is literally a screen that is there. Like, there's something to be said about it. Uh, but so we'll make it happen. I got I got some locals that might might join in and, and fill out the table. Well, shit, uh, if you want to travel to Oregon. <laughs> yeah, if we'll you want to come you. to my house. Well, uh, hey, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, somewhere in Oregon we're not, we're not telling you where good luck undisclosed location oh uh, that's it town familiar is coming bring the coffee uh, I'll <laughs> have the donuts <laughs> uh, but yeah so that's coming down I'm I'm hoping it uh, everything like works out fine with that and we, we can put out a cool, cool they used to live there. in Oregon where at jeez Everybody used to live in Oregon. I, I used to live in Oregon, but now I we live just in got, but cold. We just Minnesota. got internet. 
We just the Dallas. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. We just got internet. Mm, it's um, okay. Garbage, garbage service now. And, um, yeah. Running <laughs> toilets. Anyway. Uh, I think I covered all the... We, we're kind of just chatty tonight. But I think I got all the, the important information out there. Next week, Tuesday, The Gods We Know. Wednesday, uh, Ghost of the Past should be back on track. Special guest. Uh, with, with special guest. Minus one normie. Minus a normie guest. adding a special guest. And then Table Talk back on its original night of Thursdays. Um, there we are. That's, that's it. I got, that's I got it. We're going to end it. So thanks, everybody. I Bye. Love you. It. Bye. Love you.